Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Rebecca Alblock about season two of Jenny and Georgia, now streaming worldwide on Netflix. Welcome to the show and Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. This is officially the first 2023 taping of Pop Turnative, which is crazy. Oh, wow. I feel honored. You're the first guest of 2023. It's pretty crazy, <laughs> which is nuts. Um, people have been like wanted it for like months and they finally have season two of Jenny and Georgia now on Netflix. Is it starting to sink in that people are finally able to see season two? Yeah. It, I mean, it's been a while and every day somebody's asking when is season two coming out? When is season two coming out? And I'm, I'm really excited for people to see it and hopefully they all enjoy it. What's your mindset? Like once like you come back, you're it's established you're coming back for season two. Obviously, we know this was shot during the pandemic, so there's all the PPE and the COVID and everything. But in terms of the story, because, you know, your character was involved with the love triangle and, like, figuring things out. Are you focused on, okay, what's going to happen with, like, my character and Ginny? Are you focused more on, in general, what's going to happen? Like, what is your mindset for season two, Rebecca? I mean, of course, I mean, obviously, my first thing is, like, what is Padma going to be up yeah, to? Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because she is def she's now for sure that she's single. Yeah. She wasn't quite too sure earlier on, but now she knows for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but I was like super excited to just see what happens with Ginny and Georgia. Like the two of them, their relationship, I think, is the most obviously the most like intense, but also like so beautiful and difficult to watch. But it's so, it, I don't know, it just grips you and keeps you watching. And my favorite thing is like watching the two of them together. Mm -hmm. So I was just most excited to see what was going to happen between the two of them and how they were going to figure that out. Again, it's out now. We're not going to go into super big spoilers, but I just want to say, obviously, the mindset and the relationship with Ginny is different than it was in season one with your character. Mm -hmm. What is that kind of mindset preparation? Like, do you just kind of let it just happen based on what, like, the script says? Like, I'm just curious about that. Because there is a transformation for your character, yeah. in my opinion, in season two. Yeah, there definitely is. I think she's... Padma is very kind and caring. But she also is not immune to the awkward nature of that whole relationship. She doesn't quite know how to navigate that. Um, but... I will say about her, she's so like genuine and true to herself that she does stay like, she does stay kind. She doesn't falter in that like, in that like energy that she has. Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely is awkward. <laughs> it's it's weird for her. Um, and navigating like this relationship with her and Jenny, as well as with her and Marcus, like it's very awkward. It's tough her. because the, yeah, the Padma Marcus stuff is always going to be, it's because it, like, I don't even know. It's just, he, is he super over it that like, <laughs> it comes off awkward? Is he not over it? You know what I mean by that? It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think he, they're all like. I think he's over it. I think he, well, he's definitely over Padma. He, he, he knows what he wants and yeah. he's very sure about that, but he, they're all just kids and he doesn't even really quite know how to navigate this. He's, and... But he's like, but my point is, it's interesting because he's kind of like those scenes of like the coffee house and everything. And like mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the way he speaks to Padma is like almost kind of like playing it too cool that he's it, like done with yeah, it. But maybe, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's definitely frustrating for Padma. She's like, she's like, do you not remember like literally the past year? Like she's definitely, it's definitely really hard for her. And she... Even though she might not outwardly show that, yeah. she is definitely facing it in like inside. And I think Ginny eventually notices that too. Um and tries to be a little buffer there. Yeah. Um but yeah, I think the the word to describe those three is awkward. <laughs> 100%. Um 
obviously you get like the scripts when you get the scripts and sometimes maybe you get a few of them in advance and then maybe it's like episode episode when you're filming it when do you because i know everyone talks and there's like rumors and everything when do you find out that the music scenes are going to be coming back like the musical component like do you know do you have kind of an idea like do the producers say like yeah padma's gonna be doing music again like i'm just curious about that because that was a really cool thing about season one and season two the music yeah. Yeah, no, it's super fun. I think as soon as I got a glimpse of Brody's basement, like yeah. seeing Brody's basement in the script, I was like, okay, I know we're about to do something. <laughs> Our band is back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I um, I mean, earlier on, like even before, like that's an episode, who knows? I think it's an episode three, four, five or something like that. But even before three. we get- Are you talking those... about like the first time we, like, we see the band play the song? I think yeah. that's episode three. Oh, okay, yeah. So episode three, um, when we got the script for that, I was also being contacted by um, the whole music team mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody who was working on the songs and like letting us know what we're going to be recording and mm -hmm. instruments and all of that. Um, and so that was really exciting. But it was different this year because we couldn't um, obviously like be together mm -hmm. when we were rehearsing and stuff. So they would they brought the keyboard to my house. And I just like looked at it a little bit on my at my house, like just by myself. Um, and same with like Mason and um, Tyson. That's awesome. And everything. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah was, that, that's really cool. So yeah, it's just there was like you had to kind of get it was there was anticipation with like the music for Virginia and Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we were all so so excited too. And that one day that we were together shooting that, in between takes, we were like playing different songs. Mason had me writing down what songs he wanted me to learn so that we could jam together. We never ended up doing it because of COVID, obviously. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's so it's funny. Fun. It's kind of like your character, like Mason's character, are like in this band and like Junie just watching it. It's like you might might as well like call the the, the band like Heartbreak. You know what I mean? Not the yeah. Heartbreakers. <laughs> heartbreak. I know. I know. We, we <laughs> definitely like the got the short. Heartbroken. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, we should. We should bring that up to them. See yeah. if they, they want no, a name change. It, 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 <laughs> it's so interesting as well. <laughs> and then Marcus is just this kind of like virtuoso musician. I do want to ask because I, I think some of my favorite scenes are like the open mic, the coffee shop scenes. Like the, I love those scenes. And you mm -hmm. get to work with your brother on those scenes, which I think yeah. is really awesome. What are those scenes like at the coffee shop, like the bar? Do you call it the coffee shop? Do you call it the bar? Like it's both, just, but like. I think we just call it Blue Farm. Blue like Farm. The cafe, yeah. like the, cafe. The, <laughs> the cafe, whatever. I mean, most of my scenes were in there. Yeah. Um, and those are, I just had so much fun with those because obviously it's like my dream to share a set with my brother. Yeah. Um, and so those were like def hands down my favorite scenes. Mm -hmm. Um. But it's fun being in there because like we're kind of used to the space and like the actions are all the same. Like I know what I'm doing. I'm taking somebody's order or I'm, you know, like it's all fun like that. So I love those scenes. And oh, they're, like, they're one of they're, they're standout in season in oh, season good. two. They're great scenes because they're they're important scenes. Yeah. Because of the poetry, like you brought it up in the beginning of the interview, and I think you you said it perfectly. I mean, these are like teenagers figuring out everything and. Yeah at the end of the day, they probably don't even know what's going on or how to fix certain things. So like mm -hmm. your character, like Padma, like brings the poetry in, which kind of helps Ginny. Like it's important. Like they're great scenes, but they're important scenes. The, the open mic um, blue, blue farm scenes, in my opinion. Yeah. I think that's so beautiful that that scenes, especially between Ginny and Padma, like yep. how they share their work and they're both so supportive of each other. I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. The Netflix Oblock connection is 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 unbelievable, right? By the way, we have to say that. I mean, it's like, like Ray said it when I it's like a match made in heaven, right? So many yeah. awesome Netflix projects. But what is it like being part of the Netflix family, knowing that you know? I believe is this your third Netflix project because there's Let It Snow, and then or I'm am I missing one? Let It Snow, Let It Grow Live, and Ginny and Georgia. Yeah, and um, yeah, those are the main. Those are the Netflix original ones. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, it's great. I love, I mean, I, I feel very supported mm -hmm. by everybody, especially on Janine and Georgia, like the, the cast, the crew, like the whole creative team is so amazing and very, very welcoming and supportive. Like I've never felt, you know, out of place in yep. anything. Um, 
it's great. I, I love it. I'm so lucky. I'm so grateful. One of the things that I'm noticing more and more is is people just love all the characters in Ginny and Georgia. And like when you get in kind of the basement scenes, like you said, Brody's basement, and everyone's kind of together, it's very relatable for, you know, the high school viewer watching this show because they're like, this is me and my friends in high school. Do you think about that when you're filming the show? Like the relatability component of it? Or does that come like afterwards? Oh, no, I, I will say like when I'm reading the script, it's so much different than like seeing it. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I do feel very much like when we are when we are in those like lock, like all of us together, Brody's basement scenes or at the school or wherever we are and watching everybody else act. I'm like, wow, this does kind of remind me of high school of like what it was like in high school and navigating these things and, you know, knowing when to speak and when not to speak and those kinds of things. It's it's like. It is weird and it does kind of feel like high school, <laughs> which is a bit scary, but no, I, I can definitely see why it it's relatable for people and especially people growing up now, like yeah. in, going to high school now, like it's it's really fun and seeing it on screen, like seeing everybody on screen together is so much different than reading it because everybody brings such like a specific energy mm-hmm. to the role and to the relationships that they have with each other. It's really cool to watch. No, for sure. And uh, no, it's interesting. Well, you look at Sarah, you look at your brother, you look at Jennifer, like the Degrassi thing. I think that like, that was like, you. did you ever, I always wanted to ask you this. Like, did you ever have an opportunity to like work on Degrassi? Was it ever an option? I I think I auditioned, but okay. I was really young. I was like Yeah, 13. I was about to I, say, I, that was a little <laughs> like, yeah. like when, when did you officially start acting, would you say? Well, I started when well I got I had an agent when I was like eight years old okay gotcha yeah, yeah. I um stopped with my agent like I stopped acting for a while because I was figure skating mm-hmm. and then I got back into it when I was 15 so I would say I started acting like for real mm-hmm. around 15 16. No it's funny because I came from a hockey and sports background as well so like mm-hmm. you're seeing this like people like that this like this connection between like sports and entertainment I feel like it's never going to go away yeah oh i think there's so many shows now too with like a mix of um sports and drama yeah like figure skating shows and all types of different sports shows i think they're fun like it, why not why not mix the two there was one on netflix like spinning out that was on yeah, t- yeah yeah i don't think it was i don't know if it was canadian but it i think it was shot been. in toronto I'm pretty oh, okay. sure which is interesting no it's 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 super crazy what's your fa- okay so this is a question I've been asking a lot of the cast and I've been, cause like the, the obvious answer to this is the people you get to work with, but like, you're not, you're not allowed, like I'm not accepting the people oh, okay. as the answer to this question. Okay. <laughs> Even though everyone says, but that's the answer. <laughs> What's the best part about being on Ginny and Georgia? The stories that, yeah. that these people are telling everybody yeah. involved in this from Sarah, yeah. the writer to Deb, to every, to everybody that's involved in this has such like a, strong specific Mm -hmm. story that they want to tell and it all blends together really well and these characters are so complex Yep. and the story it's all very difficult it's 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 not easy what these people are navigating and yet everybody does so seamlessly and and beautifully i think it's it's an honor to be a part of it because everybody's so talented. And another question kind of about the complexity. I mean, you saw with Padma a lot in season, in season one. It's there in season two, but I feel like it's it's it was more there in season one. There's this growth and arc with a lot of characters. Like, they grow during, like, an episode. Like, mm-hmm. you know how you watch, like, a show and it's like, oh, they really grew this season, right? It's like, yeah. oh, like... He really grew in that scene. You know what I mean? Yeah, because they're dealing with so much yeah. that like it's impossible not to grow. You have you're forced to deal with these things, so you have to grow. It no, it's it's super crazy. Um for a wrap up, when people get a chance to watch season two, what are you hoping they get out of it takeaway wise this season? I hope that they're able to take away how people make mistakes and, mm-hmm. and learn from them but also how they how they invest in their relationships, how they invest in other people. Like every single one of these characters cares so deeply about mm-hmm. each other and about their situation. I think they're, I hope that everyone's able to look at everybody and 
through a lens of I I understand this person. I can relate to this person in yeah. some kind of way. No, that's that's so well said. People are able obviously to watch it worldwide on Netflix. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me on Pop Turn. It was so great chatting with you. Thank you so much for having me. It was great. Um, your Instagram account is it your name or is it Becca a block? Like like where can it's, people keep up to date with everything? Yeah, it's Becky a block. I know it's Rebecca, but Becky is just kind of what suits me better. It's interesting too. It's like it's like your brother too. It's like Raymond is the name, yeah. but like it's Ray. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. Rebecca, but like but yeah, it's it's no it, oh, absolutely no. It's great yeah. and uh, no awesome. Thank you so much for doing this and. Uh, can't believe people are able to finally see it. Like it's crazy. Like mm-hmm. I feel like, like I've been wait. Like I've been, we, like our viewers have been waiting for it to come out, and it's finally out. So this was awesome. This has been Pop Turner. YouTube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Till next time, this is Rebecca Oblock and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Poptternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.